All right. Three, two, one. All right, let's recap the uh, New York Jets season last year. This is how we usually start off these previews. For those of you that are new, we're heading into the AFC East. We're uh, recapping one team a day throughout the summer. Right now we're on the AFC East. We're going to start with the New York Jets. And what we do is we re we, we recap last season, see, see what happened and, and you know all the talking points there, move on to offseason transactions, recap their draft, look at some salary cap stuff if it's relevant, maybe some offseason uh, headlines and news that we just need a, a little refresher because, you know, I feel like a lot of stuff happens in March and April. And then we, you know, you got, then you got other stuff that goes on like the NBA finals and stuff like that. And, um, you know, all-star break and MLB. And then come July, it's like, oh yeah, I forgot that guy is a, was a free agent and went to that team or that coach switched there or that coach got fired, you know, a little refresher of what's going on as we head into the 2024 season. Then we preview the 2024, 2024 season by checking out their schedule, play guess the lines, and then look at the betting market on this team. So let's get into this cricket. Obviously the biggest thing with the New York jets last year was uh, Aaron Rodgers going down on what was it? The first drive of the second drive of the third game. Play. Oh, I think he had one third, third play. play. Yeah. Third play. See, this is why it's good to do the refresher, you know, mm-hmm. good to do the refresh. third play kind of, kind of screwed the jets as you can see here, because um, not only did he go down and he was out, but they ended up winning that game, which uh disgusting. I was, disgusting worst case scenario for the jets was um they were mid they were mid you lose your star quarterback you don't want to be mid you don't want to be seven and ten you want to be like three and uh, fourteen. you want to be like four and thirteen yeah yeah you want to be three and four you want to be bad at that point knowing that he's coming back the next season because the season's done right the season's yep. done i mean i guess it's good you got your young guys uh that got some experience for you right Yep. And uh or they got some experience in there and they've shown that they can play. They've got a lot of young pieces on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. So that's comforting, but at the same time, yeah, you would rather have I mean, look, if they were right here, they were four and eight, you would have loved for them to just lose out. Don't lose or don't win three of the last five games. What are you doing? You know? Yeah, what are you doing? Frank's a what dolphin doing? fan, Patriot. Yeah. Yeah, you and Frank should be friends, Patriot. You guys are a dolphin fan. Um so <clears throat> This year, though, a little bit different. Um, do you feel, I want to ask you this, uh, a lot of people were wondering if he should be on the hot seat after last season. I don't know how you can blame the guy that much for it, but I understand. Is Robert Sala on the hot seat this year? Oh, I think for sure, man. Yeah, like, you know, I think he was going to wind up getting another shot after last year because it was not his fault when you bring that in. The poor, you know, the guy hadn't really had a shot to have a big-time quarterback. Just, I like Robert Sala a lot, man, but it is kind of time to shit or get off the pot. You got to give me something this year. You're going to, as long as, you know, Aaron Rodgers stays healthy and all that, even if he doesn't, I mean, I think you got to show that you can recover from things like that, injuries like that. I know he didn't have a lot to work with at the quarterback position last year, but I, I do really think, man, that kind of no matter what, even if Aaron Rodgers was to go down or something, I believe this is probably Robert Saleh's last shot at uh, the head coaching job up there. And I think anything less than a, at least at least one playoff win, I feel like anything less than that probably gets him out the door, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just it kind of ruined the whole season as we switch into transactions. Like, like remember they brought in Dalvin Cook, and there was so much hype for Dalvin Cook, and he didn't really do. We knew that was really, going to be a. But really, of- I mean, you were kind of getting him for just depth. Yeah, and then once Rogers was done, the season was over. There was no real point of having Dalvin Cook on your team, right? It was oh, like eh. maybe we got Brees Hall. Yeah, yeah, that guy. That guy's pretty good. But uh, some, I was looking through this last night. Um, not too many moves. Uh, kind of some big names, but uh, you know, uh, they they released a tight end. Uh, how do you say Uzoma? Uzama? Yeah, that, Uzuma. That, that kind of, Uzuma. That was kind of a big deal. Um, they signed some some, some people, uh, some big names that stand out. Yeah, they got Tyrod Ta- Taylor as a backup QB. Uh, wide receiver Corey Davis. Um, they re- uh, they no, they released Corey Davis. Um, did he retire? It says reserves retired. Oh crazy uh they resigned their kicker greg zerling i love it when the kickers get resigned but some of the big names they brought big boy tyrone smith over from the cowboys uh patriots probably not too happy about that guys uh, up there in age but still can play still one of oh yeah I mean, still we've seen some of those big boys i mean we saw um god what's his name uh whitworth uh yeah well, yeah, uh, Rams yeah he was 40. 41 he's a yeah. man he's 40 yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right uh he was still playing uh late in his career 
come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. <laughs> That's right. He was playing. He was playing, and you know, won a Super Bowl before he retired. Uh, they signed Mike Williams, and now you know, Mike never stays healthy. But since he's getting paid from the Chargers, uh, they got him on a nice, friendly deal of only like two million dollars. So, yeah. so why not, right? Bro, why not? What about Mike Williams' comeback player of the year? Ooh, we'll get to that. But yeah, make note of that when we look at we'll get the betting odds here. Um. Other than that, though, you know, they traded Zach Wilson. We knew that was going to happen. They traded him to the to the Broncos. I don't know. Do, are there any other things that stand out here to you? Yeah. The one we have not mentioned that does stand out to me that I think will be pretty good and help bolster this defense. Remember bringing Hassan Reddick over from oh, the Eagles? Yes. Uh, yes. I think that's a good pickup, man. That guy, he's you no know, aging guy, but still very capable player right there. Brought uh, Javon Kinlaw over to help bolster that interior defensive line over from the 49ers. Oh, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so do they, I did see them, you know, not, not a whole, whole lot of noise here. A lot of these guys kind of aging, but at the same mm-hmm. time, all guys that were very capable players at one time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's good. They're just building depth. They got a lot of young, right. good young pieces and then you mm-hmm. bring in some veterans around them. Right. And, and as like I said, you bring in guys like this to teach a lot of those young pieces, man, guys that have been around the league, played a lot of football and stuff like that. could show you how to kind of operate off the field as well. I mean, I think they're building a pretty good little deal here in New York, and if they can get the the big dog to stay healthy behind center, man, I think they'll I think they're gonna make a little run at this thing, man. I think mean, that's a key thing. All these pieces, like like Loki was saying, Tyrone Smith misses a lot of time. Patriot agrees, he does. But you know, if these guys stay healthy. Him, yeah. Mike Williams, or at least you know, in in the fact that they have depth, like Mike Williams, you don't have to play him as much. Maybe he transitions into that role of his career where he's like. Hey, I've been getting injured a lot. Maybe I, I, I'm not. I should not have to go ball. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't need to play as many snaps each game, right? Especially when you got no. like Garrett Wilson and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, Mike Williams not going to be the sole focus uh, of defenses in this offense. You know, he's not going to be the guy you have to double team and stuff like that. That's going to go to Garrett Wilson. And, you know, Brees Hall. You're going to have to obviously focus on him. So Mike might wind up finding some one on one coverages on the outside that really benefit him. I could see that. I have zero idea because yeah, for some reason my my you'll see if you watch the video, my I'm like, what's going on? I couldn't hear anything. Uh they disconnected, reconnected. I don't know why. Anyways, but I agree with everything you said. Okay. I, I was in there, I was like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh speaking of big boys, we go to their draft. They had seven draft picks. Uh the first round was the 11th overall. They got a big boy out of Penn State. Olumiyua Fashun Shanu out of uh, Penn State, 6'6", 312 pounds, offensive tackle. How about that, man? How I like this that? guy, man. Uh, I like this guy. This guy was going to be a probably top 10 pick two years ago out of Penn State. Decided to come back and take one more run at it with his guys there. And uh, I do think this is going to be a great player in the league. I do think this was a good pick right here, man. Like I said, a guy that may have fell down the board just a little bit there. Um, on the back end of that last season. But, I mean, I think this guy's a very capable player. I, I like this pick, man. I do. Yeah, they even traded back. Because uh, remember, the Vikings traded up to get uh, J.J. McCarthy. They, they, mm-hmm. I think they switched, like, one spot. But uh, so they got, you know, some draft capital and still got to get the guy that they wanted. So, they, I mean, at that point, there wasn't really – there wasn't a flashy wide receiver for them to get. They didn't really – I mean, beefing up the offensive line is always going to be a good idea. And, oh yeah, uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a great pick, um, and then in the third round they picked up uh, Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. Be honest with you, he's a wide receiver. I have five eleven, two fifteen. Have no idea. I didn't watch any well, Western Kentucky football. This guy year. actually uh, <clears throat> led the nation in yards after catch over the past two seasons with sixteen hundred seventy four, and had his best uh, was at his best with the ball in his hands. I mean, very explosive guy, powerful, instinctive, uh, make defenders miss. So I like this guy, man. Not a bad pick here. Okay, all right. And then, you know, they had, you know, fourth, fifth round pick. So we'll just go through that. They brought in uh, Braylon Allen, running back from Wisconsin. Uh, you know, I feel like it's a good good area. The fourth round is to go get some of these running backs, right? That's that's where you kind of want to go. Well, this them. is a good one, too, man. This is a, you know, a big back out of Wisconsin that joined Ron Dane, James White, and Jonathan Taylor as the only true freshman in Wisconsin history to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. So pretty good company right there for Mr. Allen. So, uh, all right. He can scoot then, huh? All right. He can play. Right. He's more of a, I mean, he's more of a bruiser. He can, he can move, but he's more of a 6'1", 235. I mean, he's a built like a brick shit house. 
And then I kind of like this one. This was a value pick just for the future. Nothing for this season, but Jordan Travis from Florida State, right? Taking a yep. gamble on him coming off that injury. I, I, um, I can see you get gambling here in the fifth round. Yeah, why you not? Know, you know, guy. why not? Uh-huh. You know, it's it's not going to affect you this season. He gets to sit and learn behind Rodgers and whatnot. And who knows? This might be a diamond in the rough, huh? It, it could be. You're obviously going to see how the leg responds to the, you know, the obvious awful injury last year. But yeah, I mean, if that responds well, this guy's a football player. Another running back, which is kind of crazy, out of South Dakota State, Isaiah Davis. They took in the six. And then they also took a cornerback, Quantes. Bro, they drafted this guy from the Canadian Football League. Is that him, Quantes? Quantes Stiggers from the Toronto Argonauts. Let's go. Okay. I didn't know you could draft him from the Canadian Football League. Let's go. I didn't know either. Uh, And then Jalen Key, a – was that free safety? Yep, safety from Alabama. Alabama. Look at that. He was 6-0 and oh at Alabama. No, oh, he's six feet. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's pro- primarily played the high at Alabama there. He can line up over the slot and linebacker depth, too. He can run with some tight ends, shows good instincts and some zone looks there. But I, I'm not sure that Jalen Key is an every-down player. More of a yeah. more of a kind of a formation guy, scheme guy. Oh, Seventh-round draft pick. You kind of just – At Alabama? You know, see if he makes the team. You know, see if he makes the team. Yeah. Um, okay. And then off-season news, um, I you have to refresh my memory. I, I I I'm kind of biased. There's there's some recent news with them that I'm aware of that I'm going to pull up here uh, involving Rogers. If there's anything th- that was major that I I forgot about or missed, let me know that you can think of that that happened. But it seems like kind of a quiet off-season for the Jets. Um, this was about a week or two ago. This is Aaron Rodgers on the golf course. So let's take a listen. You think uh, Luke Getzey's going to utilize Devontae Adams good in the new Raiders offense? I love Luke Getzey. He's a fantastic coach. Awesome. Love and I love Devontae. It. Can't wait to play with him awesome. again. Great. Love to hear it. Yeah. How's your game today? How you hitting? Did you hear that? I heard that, man. Can't wait to play with him again. Not play against him. Play Maybe they're talking about his game football 25. Maybe. 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 <laughs> that was... That was about a week or two ago. A little foreshadowing um, there, but got broke. Can you imagine? That was July 11th and about a week um, ago. Oh yeah, man. Never mind. That was like just a few days, days ago. ago. And then, he, and then the rumor started yesterday. Jets reportedly eyeing uh, Raiders Devontae Adams in a trade. We know they tried to do that last year. Now they're trying to do it this year. And uh, of course, um, people for his agent had to come out and say, "No, there's no trade going on here." Um, there's no talks. Devontae's getting ready for the Raiders because that's what you have to say because yeah. you're still on the Raiders, right? Tampering. Do you think, tampering. <laughs> do you think there's any legs to this, Cricket? Do you think there's any like Can we see Devontae Adams this season as a Jet? Yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure. We kind of – I guess we'll look at these the, the salary cap and all that, but, I mean, I, I don't know that they can afford him or be able to finagle enough or if they want to give away some of those young pieces to be able to bring him over for a season maybe. I mean – I don't know. You've already added Mike Williams. You got Garrett w- w- uh, Garrett Wilson, who is a young stud, and uh, so I, you know I don't know that. I mean, obviously Aaron Rodgers and Devontae got a great history together, but do you really want to kind of screw up what you're what you're building here? I mean, well, you can get I mean, if Aaron stuff. Rodgers wants and Aaron Rodgers gets it, I'm yeah. glad you brought up the salary cap because here's his here's his contract. Now, if you trade for it, you would have an out after this season. He signed a $140 million five-year contract, but only – see, this is what – everyone looks at that number, right, the 140 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got paid. That's um, what I look at. blows my mind. Is the total that, – that's not the one to look at. The one you got to look at is guaranteed money. Right. He really signed He really signed a three-year $65 million deal is what right. he signed. And so they could trade for him. He's uh, – you know, his base salary is uh, 16 point – about 16.9. He's a 25. Now – He's $25 million cap hit this year. Um, the Jets don't have much cap space left. They've got about $6 million in cap space, but they've got professionals that can make this work. There's many ways to get underneath the cap here. Yeah. Uh, some things that you can do, because because the NFL is a hard cap. You cannot at any point go over it. And if you do, you get hit hard with draft. Lu- luxury tax or something? Nope. You That's, get well. You do get fined. You, you get draft picks taken away. You've seen even first round draft picks taken away. And the NFL can just void contracts too, and just say no, you can't do that. Sorry, and just void it. Say no, nope, you got to come up with something else. Yeah, try try better. Yeah. So um, so what could they do? 
there's some options to make this work. Well, you could trade a piece away that that would, you know, benefit you. And there's one on here that I was looking at. Mm. Alan Lazard's a $12 million cap hit this year. I yeah, think, why is that? I think because Rodgers wanted his guys and he made sure his guys got paid. And he, he told, you remember last year, he was having them go sign all the guys that he wanted. I'm thinking, you say, hey, Alan, listen, have fun in Vegas this year. It's going to be fun. I got you paid. Um, You're welcome. Go show out. Go show out and uh, try to get a second contract with the. He's still 29, right? He's still 29. So I mean, you get you go have a good year in 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 Vegas. You could you get another contract. So I'd say see ya. So that's one option, right? Kind of to to help in part of a you know trade like give. And I think if you're the Raiders, if you are going to trade him, obviously you're, you're looking for draft picks is what you want. But if you get a wide receiver in exchange along with it, I think that and especially someone like Alan Lazard. I mean, a good player. Solid player, right? Nothing, nothing that you're like super excited about, but you're not mad. Yeah, at it. solid, solid. It's a little has a little been over on top of the career. trade, right? Yeah, I mean, I, he could be a trade piece for sure. Um, I think you're gonna have to throw a lot more with that if I'm the damn Raiders. I'm gonna give you Devontae Adams. You're gonna give me a lot more than Alan Lazard. What kind of draft picks do they have available in the next couple of drafts? Do we know that by any chance? I mean, can they trade some of that away? I feel like they and they already got rid of some of that. Oh, there's always stuff to get rid of. They, yeah. they, listen, they'll make it work. They'll, they'll, if they want it and they want to get it done, they'll make that work. And then another option, what you could do too, is uh, if you go back and we look at Devonte Adams' contract here, the next thing to do is to just kind of void this contract and, uh, well, not void it, but re, you know, get back to the table and give him a new contract to where you can give him a bunch of guaranteed money up front. And then push it uh, down to these other years, and basically you're gambling all in on this year because you're going to give a 32 year old wide receiver um, extra money, where you could get out after this year. But one way to get underneath the salary gap would be, hey, we'll uh, we'll extend you, and then we'll push your contract out. That way, it fits nice and neat underneath our salary cap this season. Um, but then again, you're going to have a bunch of that dead money probably later on in his career because he probably won't be playing for your team. But that's just the gamble you take. If you if you want to go now, you want to go all in now, push the chips in, which I think if you see Rodgers and if he looks good coming off that injury, I wouldn't fault them for trying. Like this is the this is the year cricket because you look at this, you look at this roster and they're pretty stacked and you are not going to keep all these young pieces. I'm no, sorry. you can't. Defensive side, you're not going to be keeping. Look at that defense, bro. Yes. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is disgusting. You're in a good did. way. Yeah, but you're not. You're not going to keep all these pieces. Uh, no. And you got Sauce Gardner coming up yeah. soon for a contract extension. You got uh, you got a bunch of money you still owe to Aaron Rodgers. Like even if he retires after this next season, you still got a huge salary cap hits there. Um, Look at that defensive line though, man. You got Jermaine Johnson, Javon Kinlaw, Quinnen Williams, Hassan Redding. Yeah. That's a gross yeah. defensive line, dude. So I'm saying, so I wouldn't fault them if they ended up. I mean, I, I would think it'd be stupid, but if they're if the goal is to go all in this season, then I'm like, well, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna eat some salary cap with De Devonte Adams later on uh, down the line, but I think it would be worth it to try to go all in now. Just think about it, man. You got you got Garrett Wilson as your wide receiver here. You got Mike Williams and Xavier Gibson. I mean, if you had Garrett Wilson, Devonte Adams, uh, uh, Xavier Gibson, that is just nasty. That is just nasty, Ooh, man. I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing some good little like futures awards bets possibilities and stuff. I'm kind of well, I know we're about to get to it, man. But yeah, I, I'm telling you, I, I, the more I look at it, I like this Jets team for the last couple of years. I liked them before they signed Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, I expected a little more out of Zach Wilson come out of BYU there, but obviously that guy's interested in other things than throwing the football. But um, once they added Aaron Rodgers, man, I'm telling you, I think they've got a lot of pieces in place. That really sets this team up to make a deep run, dude. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. I have a weird feeling that Devontae Adams is going to be a New York Jet. Rodgers doesn't drop hints like that and yeah, just, just out of nowhere, right? He didn't. No, yeah, he, that he was him telling me. that was him telling the Jets, "Hey, make it happen. All right, make it happen. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. I'm going to put this out there. We're going to get the rumor swirling, and uh, I want my guy here." So he told his buddy, well, he "said Hey, man, turn on the TikTok. Get this. Get this video. Yeah, let me let me, let me tell my Jets this so they listen." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, outside of that, I don't think there were. Can you think of anything else that was going on with the with the Jets this offseason? Yeah, no, no, not really, man. Like I said, more of a 
more of a quiet offseason turn. I, I know I didn't see him getting a bunch of dudes with the domestic violence charges or racing cars and all that stuff. I didn't see all that. So I'm sure they're happy about that part. They didn't have a bunch Absolutely. of dudes get arrested. So know. that's good. I don't know what the hell is going on with my headphones this morning, but they keep going in and out. <laughs> it's okay. But, yeah. We'll start what to sound it? like a Jets fan. No, man, I got my shitty Patriots. All right. I got my shitty Patriots, but uh, yeah. no, I'm not, I'm not uh, a, a Jets fan. I'm just saying, and this team, it, they're ready to win now. Look at the names on that win. list, man. It's hard to uh, deny that. A lot, of, a lot of studs on that lineup right there in that roster. So let's focus on this upcoming season. And we get to play my favorite part is guess the lines. And uh, let's take a look and see uh, you know, what, what the, the Jets have ahead of them this year. And let's see if they can potentially win this division. Uh, you know, or just make the playoffs and maybe make a, a you know a contention for the Super Bowl and Rodgers get his second ring. They start this no, I'm no, betting the exact uh, betting the exact again today. I'm betting two. Betting two. We're setting the over under at two and a half. Uh, for those of you that knew what we do is here we play guess the lines where I try to guess the current odds for each of these games. Um, and uh I have to get it exactly right for me to get a point. We set it at two and a half. I a couple weeks ago or couple previews ago i guess it would have been a couple weeks ago i had i was feeling myself i got six got five six, i think right? was it six it was six it was so i was going for the record seven six that's fair it that's was fair. six i was going for the record six seven. has got an asterisk by it i don't remember that I okay it. all right <laughs> um man they did not do the jets any favors though you're gonna start the season off with aaron Rodgers coming back everyone's gonna be nervous about that achilles again and they, they have to start the first, oh, well, I mean, look at this. They start the, start the first two games on the road, but then they get four straight home games. That's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, no, actually, never mind. This one's a home game, but it's, I think this is a London, London game. Or starts at 6 30 a.m. Yeah. So never mind. Um, it just looks like they got to, God, that, that sucks. Cause look, they got to fly to London. They got to come back home on Monday Night Football, play Buffalo. And then the next four weeks, three of the four, they're on the road. Yeah, man, this uh, this game not far travels though. Pittsburgh and New England really is, and even the home games are kind of tough there. Yep, let's get into it though. They start off against San Francisco, man. Uh, we know Rodgers does not play well out in the Bay Area. I'm gonna say San Francisco. This is Monday Night Football. Gotta put that into consideration for the line. I gotta say, San Francisco, four and a half point favorites. Jets plus five and a half at the 40. Oh, I was gonna go five and a half, but I, Monday night football I said maybe we'll give it a point because it's a big game. Five and a half. Oh man, okay, all right, all right. Uh, then we go to then they go down to Tennessee and play the Titans. Let's see, the Titans, Tennessee, uh, Roger, uh, the Jets, three and a half point favorites. Jets minus four at the Titans. Oh, the damn hook. Who, who makes it minus four this early in the season? What are we doing? We love that. What are we doing? Okay. All right. Um, and then short week, man, that's rough. You play Monday night, then you got to play Sunday, and then you got a short week, Thursday night football against the Patriots. Jets home against the Patriots. Probably nine and a half point favorites. Jets minus seven and a half at home against the Patriots. I was I'm I'm all over. I'm psyching myself out, man. I'm psyching myself out. Okay. Yo, you okay. Go. I had that in my head. I had seven and a half, but I'm like, no, my Patriots suck. Let's go nine and a half. <laughs> I bet that now, by the way. I bet that now. Um, right now. Even if Rodgers goes down again, they're going to steamroll the Patriots. Um, and then they're home against Denver. I'm going to say home against Denver. Uh, five and a half point favorites. Jets minus seven and a half at home against Denver. Man, they got Denver and New England ranked equal. That's what I'm saying, man. That's I extra happens. rest, though, for them. Extra rest because they yeah, have ten days. Yeah. Okay. Okay, man, this is rough. This is rough out the gate. Rough. Jets, Patriots says Jets will be 9-8. and eight. Oof. Oof. That is a tough schedule, man. And they got to go over to London. So this is not a home game. It's in London. They're playing the Vikings. I got to say they're uh, five-and-a-half point favorites against Minnesota here. Jets minus four against the Vikings in London. Damn. I need some more of this coffee. The Monday Night Football against the Bills. This is going to be a good one. Um, Monday Night Football against the Bills. They're home. Coming off of London, though. Buffalo, two-point favorites. 
Jets minus one and a half at home against the Bills. I would I would look at betting Buffalo that game. Good morning, Pissing. Really? I think we bet Buffalo. You're going to be uh, coming back from London. Hell, you play they Monday couldn't night? Damn Bills uh, that Monday night game last year. They couldn't beat them without Aaron Rodgers. They couldn't beat Zach Wilson in that damn thing. This is true. They do own them when they play in New York. Yeah. 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 Then they got to go to Pittsburgh and play the Steelers. I'm going to say the Jets are a two-and-a-half point favorite. Jets minus one at the Steelers. Okay. 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 This ain't my best best showing. And then we got to go to New England. Uh, the Jets are going to be six-and-a-half point favorites. Jets minus four-and-a-half at the Patriots. I bet that now. Mm-hmm. Bet that now. Bet that now. That is disgusting. Are you kidding me? Is that for the first half? Is that the first half line? First first quarter line. Yeah, first quarter line. First first that actually might not be a bad minute of a game. Quarter. How often do we see a team jump out on somebody the first quarter and then let them, yeah. let them kind of creep back into it? Yeah. And then Thursday night football, another Thursday night football game. Man, this is not an easy schedule. You're looking at traveling and who they're playing and whatnot. Home against Houston. Houston, oh man, I I, I don't know the market on Houston if they're overhyping them or not. I'm going to say Jets minus one. Jets minus three at home against the Texans. They got that listed at even money right now, so it's probably closer to two and a half. Okay. Um, that feels right for right now. Um, at Arizona. It's after a bye week. Eh? No, nope, I'm not yet. God, they got a late bye week, yeah. too. But you got you know extra rest. You got because, you know, 10 days rest. Yeah. Jets, three and a half point favorites in Arizona. Jets minus three at the Cardinals. Man, struggling, bro. Right, I'm, I'm better after the bye week. So <laughs> one more, and then we'll get get to the bye week. Uh, so then, um, then they home against Indy. Jets minus two and a half. Jets minus four at home against the Colts. Man, I am all off tonight. Bye week though. Bye week. Late bye week. Week twelve. A little refresher, and then we get to hit the home stretch here. Home against Seattle. Jets minus um. Jets minus three and a half. Jets minus four and a half at home with the Seahawks. Okay. Down in Miami, I'm going to say Miami is a two-point favorite in that one. Let's go. Jets plus two at the Dolphins. I got a shot at my exacta. There's one of them. <laughs> uh, okay, then they're at Jacksonville after being Miami. You think they just stay down there? I mean, hell, you can be back in New York from down there on one of them private birds about an hour and a yeah, half. Yeah, you so. could, but I mean, you could. I mean, I, I, I would. I almost if you're the owner, though, you don't want them staying down there for the whole damn week. That's true. I don't think the owner cares. The owner just wants or to the win. coach. The coach. The coach. The owner don't really give a shit, but the coach don't want them staying down there the whole week. Uh, so at Jacksonville, I'm gonna say Jets one point favorite. Jets minus one at the Jaguars. Let's go right on two. I need you to come back, baby. Don't call it a comeback. I need you to break this thing out, man. Here we go. Here we go. Then they are home against the Rams. Rams, I'm going to say, I don't know. I can't remember. We already did this, but I'm trying to figure out what the market is on the. Hmm. I think one thing, but I'm going to go Jets minus three and a half. Whew. Jets minus three at home against the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half. So either way, I was going to be off by the hook. Okay. Okay. Then they got to go to Buffalo. Uh, minus three. Buff- Buffalo minus three. Whew. Jets plus two and a half at the Bills. <laughs> right there. And then home against Miami. Uh, Jets minus three. Oh. Got me on the last one. Jets minus three at home against the Dolphins. Ugh. I never get a week 18 oh, right, Cricket. I, I never get it right. Oh, my oh, God. Man. I feel like Ian did yesterday. Man, they were on Spoke the Spread. There's a WNBA game, and they all had them. I think Loki was in there with it, too. They all had the, whoever it was. I don't remember who the hell it was. Minus eight and a half, and uh, they were up 89 to 80, and then some girl hit a half-court three-pointer at the buzzer to oh. 89-83 to screw the eight and a half. That's the way I feel right now, man. Oh, I thought that was all over but the crying, man. You, you had to feel good knowing that it was week 18 and I never get those right. That's what I, I was thinking, bro. Through. You when you you hit the Rams pick right before that, and I was like, let's go. We're good to go now, man. Oh god, I hate getting bad beat like that. And 
I yeah, I was going to go two and a half, but I was like, you know what? This is a good division could be on the line in this game. So it's not your typical week 18 where they don't know if it's going to like, this is probably more likely than not going to be a meaningful game. Like they're going to be trying in this that one. You would think, yeah, you would think that one should, should have a lot on the line at that point. Yeah. So I was like, well, we'll, we'll make it a solid three then. And, uh, Banked it. Man, Let's solid go. three's a winner, bro. Let's look at some of these, uh, I'm, I'm back. I'm, I told you after the bye week, man. Man, after the comes week. back after the, you know, that's one of those damn NFL games. It's like a it's three to nothing at halftime, and they score eight touchdowns the second half to go over. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. God, mm-hmm. Boy. Let's look at some of these uh, awards, sir, or some of these futures, I guess. Yeah, so the futures bet for uh, – we'll start with the division. The Jets are the third favorite at plus 200. You got the Bills at plus 160, Dolphins at plus 190, Jets at plus 200. So kind of – it's kind of up in there between all three of those teams. The Patriots at plus 2,200. I, let me lay minus 5,000 no, all right? Let me do it because I hate them. I hate them. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, um, you like any value here with the Jets at plus 200 for the division? You know, uh, I, of, of the three, that's the one I like. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. I'm not putting any money on the Patriots, but of the three there, I think whichever one, I would take probably whichever one of those had the, uh, I guess, the best odds, uh, you know, as far as value goes. You know, the plus 200, they're obviously higher than the Dolphins and the Bills there. So I think of those three teams, I think it's pretty wide open in this division. So I think I'd probably just take the ones with the, you know, the most profitable odds. Basically, what you have to do here is you just pick two of these three to win the division, and you bet on them, and you'll you'll make money. So if you put two units on the let's say the yeah, Jets and the right. Bills, you're going to come out profitable either way. If one of those teams wins, um, I would go Miami and, and the Jets. I would just I take so, plus one ninety and plus two hundred, put two units on each, and just say as long as the Bills don't win the division, I'm making money. I, you know, I for some reason I feel like. You know, I know how good Josh Allen is, talented and all that. We'll get to the Bills in a day or two, but I, I just feel like it's going to be a da- more down year for the Bills. Me too. Jets, nice little 10 to 1 to go to the Super Bowl. It's not a bad little ticket to have. Not a bad ticket to have at all, man. What are they to uh, win that thing out right? I, I kind of like that little 10 to 1 on going to the Super Bowl there. 20, 20 to 1. You get 20 to 1 for them to win the Super Bowl. Uh, I mean, I don't hate a little sprinkle on that. Throw you a little half unit or something on it. It'd be worth, I mean, you want to build a good, pretty good little portfolio in this thing. And I think that's definitely a team you want in it in the beginning. San Francisco, a little exacta. San, San Francisco versus the New York Jets, 37 to 1. Oh, and we're going to see that game week one, Monday Night Football. Yeah, so. and then we could talk about first game of the season, Ooh, last game of the totally season. That totally be something that happens. Yeah. Don't we see that all the time? A little storyline, right? Like, yeah, okay. Where is Super Bowl this year? Uh, that's a good question. Let's see. What Super Bowl are we on? Oh, uh, God. I don't care. Keep the number 50 something now. Um, Super Bowl 2025 will be in New Orleans. Caesar New- Super Bowl. Nolans. Nolans. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. And it is Super Bowl. God. What is it called? Is that 58? Can we look up who won the Super Bowls in nine? In New Orleans, can we start start putting some numbers on there, or can we put in parentheses what the heck that? I think that's fifty nine. I know all the damn Roman numerals. Yeah, what are we doing? Not a single one of us from Rome, man. Yeah, no. Um, you want to look at some? Oh, let's look at their uh, win total. Yeah, quick. We got the Jets, the New York Jets. Over under nine and a half. That feels right. I mean, you look at that schedule. Not, I mean, a long, long stretch there. A lot of traveling in some spots. Um, nine and a half, juice to the over at minus one sixty. Here, it feels about right. I think if you, I think if you like them to get ten wins, you probably go look at the. You get better odds betting them to win the division. Hell, I would just do that Miami Jets pick. Right, Patriot likes that one. He likes Miami. He says Miami's going to be making me some money this season. Hey, so it's like find them, find them money on the floor. It's Super Bowl fifty nine. Thank you, Patriot. Yeah, That's thank, what thank you, Patriot. Appreciate that. Um, and the Patriot, if you like your, you know, your Jets on that, you said nine and eight there, you can get under nine and a half wins for the Jets at plus 125 right now. That's on DraftKings. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, I mean, maybe not a bad thing. Once again, hell, it's probably not a bad idea to fire a little bit on some of the unders for the Jets just because if something happens to Aaron Rodgers, they fall off a cliff. They got Tyrod Taylor. What you talking about? I love Tyrod, man. I do. I love Tyrod. Tyrod's not winning 10 games with that team. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we got the so the Jets to make the playoffs are minus 165. 
Um, I feel like there's no real value there. Um, some alternate season win totals here on the Jets. Um, according to Bet Online, you can bet Go Jets over. over seven and a half at minus 500. But if you think they're going to get injured, like you're saying, and they have a seven win season again, and Salah gets fired, you can get plus 350 on that. Yeah. All- plus- Plus one nine over, got over eleven and a half. Plus two fifteen over here. Okay, okay. So, what would you rather have? Plus two fifteen over eleven and a half wins, or plus two hundred they win the division? I think I'd rather have the plus two hundred to win the division. Uh, yeah. I mean, if they get over they 11, could they win get the division 11. with eleven wins, you could get eleven wins and still win the division. I I, I agree. Uh, I mean, if you if they're getting over that eleven and a half wins, I'm see no way they don't win that division. Yeah, but they could. There still is a possibility. Where win. You, yeah, you could. Yeah, I'm with. 11, you. Was that eleven and six? That could win be, you the division. Yeah, that'd be gross. They get to eleven. Probably and six, be some tiebreakers, you know, and stuff like that. But I'd rather bet the division on that. Yeah. Because once again, that's that's one of those. I think eleven wins probably wins that division. Uh, Coach of the year, if you think this is going to be a turnaround year for Robert Sala, you can get him at eighteen to one. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, let's go to the, you know. Think, I mean, uh, that, that's maybe maybe not a bad. But worth a worth a sprinkle? Because like I said, I mean, yeah. they're obviously going to be a much improved team here, and I mean, he'll get a lot of credit for that. Yeah, and Rogers, um, sixteen to one to be MVP. We've seen. 40 year old quarterbacks win MVPs before. We have, man. We, we have absolutely. <laughs> Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what was his yeah. name? Cricket? The last one that uh, did it? The only start, one that did it? Start, start with a T, didn't it? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Tom Brady. That's right. <laughs> I think I do like this uh, looking at these kind of awards here and stuff, man. I took a little peek over at Mike Williams for comeback player of the year, man. He's he's 10, plus 10,000 to, uh, Comeback player of the year. I will throw me a couple dollars on Mike Williams just in case at plus 10,000. I don't even have that on here. Comeback player of the year. That could be one of those weird ones. I'll tell you another one too that I'm kind of looking at here. Uh, maybe Garrett Wilson, offensive player of the year, bro. Let's take a look at that. 28 to one is what I got. Um, yeah, 25 to one over here. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, I mean, you know, that's what I'm thinking because, like, obviously, if Aaron Rodgers has an MVP caliber season and they play all play well i feel like a, the the lion's share of those uh receiving yards and touchdowns are probably going to go to this guy he has a breakout season there obviously it's gonna be a lot different having aaron Rodgers throw you the football and has been zach wilson trevor simeon and the like do you think you should get ahead of the market now and bet uh Devontae adams offensive player of the year at 50 to 1 i think if you think there's any possibility that that guy's going to the jets you 100 because those odds will be cut at least in half yeah, and think about it. He would he would be so if you get it now and he does get traded, and let's say he has a good season and the Jets win and you know they're doing well, they're gonna be like, Well, look, it's because Devontae came over, right? He was if he starts, you know, he gets 12, 12 touchdowns, you know, over a thousand, it gets close to fifteen hundred yards or something like that. And they're like, Well, it's clearly because Devontae Adams was on the he was the missing piece. And if he comes over, man, him and Aaron Rodgers both gonna feel like they got a new lease on life. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Let's look at some of these Jets picks. You got uh Aaron Rodgers over under on his INTs are eight and a half. We know he doesn't like to throw interceptions. Yeah, that's under, man. Yeah, under is minus one twenty five. Passing touchdowns twenty six and a half. Oh, that's a little low. Well, they got a little low. Minus one fifteen both ways. I feel that is low, man. I'm going over that. I'd like to ladder that up a little bit. 3,700 uh, 3, passing yards also feels low. I feel like if you play a full season, it's hard for a quarterback nowadays with offense weapons to not get 4,000 passing Especially Aaron Rodgers. The thing that's tough about these bets that's is lower than Russell Wilson's were last year. Mm-hmm, it is. What are we doing? Here's the thing, though. Injury. This is why you never want to yeah. bet over on players' futures. You always want to bet unders. More times than not, you're going to win if you just only bet unders because injury risk. No yeah. one ever thinks of injury risk. It's think yeah. of all the people that lost their Aaron Rodgers overs tickets last year <laughs> in the first drive of the season. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Hey, at least that didn't make you sweat it, man. <laughs> this one's got your Brees Hall receiving TDs three and a half. Oh, that feels like oh. I, that'd be a sweat all season long, man. Oh, I doubt it, man. I bet that guy has that by November. Yeah, it could be a sweat. You know, there'll be one game where he gets like two. 
he gets two, and he'll probably go, and then he'll go one. like <laughs> then he'll go like five six weeks where he's he's running them in and not he'll even probably have two that. against San Francisco and he won't get another one until after the bye week. <laughs> the bye weeks after, after Thanksgiving. <laughs> after Thanksgiving, <laughs> I'm saying that movie. That could be a fun sweat. That could be a fun sweat. Let's see. What are some of these other ones? Let's go to your Garrett Wilson over under seven and a half receiving TDs. I'm going over on that too. It's crazy because we don't know. We don't. We haven't seen Rodgers with these. Because who's going to throw with Aaron Dunn? Like. <laughs> who's yeah. throwing the football? Robert Sala going to get out there and suit up? <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. Um, ooh, this one's interesting. 88 and a half receptions. That's a lot of receptions. For Garrett Wilson? Yeah. No, nah, I think he's get, he'd get to a honey bun with Aaron Rodgers back there. What if Tyrod Taylor's back there? He won't get to a honey bun. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Your guy Hassan Reddick, over oh, dude, that's a big number. Ten and a half sacks. Ooh, man, that guy's that's a freak big... though, man. I like this guy, man. I do like this guy. He's nasty back there, man. He will he, he's one of those guys, man, that kind of goes in spurts. I feel like you know, he might have three or four games straight without a sack, and then he'll give you three in one game. Um, I think the easiest bet on here is Mike Williams under four and a half receiving TDs. That's the easiest bet. Man, I love Mike Williams, too, man. He's had some bad luck. I love Mike Williams. I'm pulling for him so hard. I might be betting with my heart here on Mike. <laughs> Under 750 and a half receiving yards? Yeah, lock that in. Under 60 and a half receptions? There's no way. If you're going to bet even gonna play Williams, 60. If you're going to bet Mike Williams, bet the unders. Outside of comeback player of the year, bet everything else under. <laughs> this might be my new favorite. Him under 60 and a half receptions. He's not even going to take 61 snaps this season. What are oh, you doing? God, I mean, I there's no way. That's a lot of snaps. <laughs> hey, I don't know if he'll have 61 targets. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> Let alone 61 offensive plays. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Oh, man. I hate to throw the shade at Mike, man. I'm pulling for Mike. Had some bad luck there. But if we're, if we're judging off historic performances, man, we can't feel that great about it. Yeah. Well, there you got it. Yeah, unless you got something else, that's our New York Jets 2024 uh, recap. Yeah, no, man, I, I think recap that I can preview. Yeah, I don't really see. Uh, I don't see anything else that, that I love in this one. It's a definitely probably one of the most intriguing teams for me this year, obviously, with all the question marks coming in there and Rodgers and all that stuff. Can he come back and do it? But I do think they've got a lot of really good pieces on this team, young pieces, veteran pieces on both sides of the ball. They could really be difference makers here. So I'm kind of anxious. This is one of the most intriguing teams this year for me. Absolutely. Patriot says, uh, no run game. Save your money. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll when you see. got Aaron Rodgers back there, he's a magician, man. You you got to account for everything, you know? You, you do. And I, and I think it is going to be key. It's, uh, it's really going to boil down to how lucky are the Jets with these guys like Tyron Smith coming over. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers coming back. Mike Williams, can all these guys stay healthy, man? Can Brees Hall stay healthy? Another guy that we've seen be banged up and miss some time there as a young guy. So there's a lot of question marks, and it's really going to hinge on uh, the injury factor for this team, I think. Absolutely. But there's your 2024 uh, preview for the New York Jets. If you're listening to this uh, over on podcast format, make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching us on Rumble, we love Rumble. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up. YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, wherever you're watching this, come check us out. Uh, go over to Rumble, search for Game On Show, uh, and uh, make sure to give us a follow. We really appreciate it.